Okay, let's go straight to questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Mark Larson. Well, uh, you know, uh, you went out recruiting, and uh, I'm sure you got some response there. I was just wondering kind of what has been the response that you've received, not only from recruits, but around the country since Friday? Everyone in the city of New York was extremely excited. Um, locations that we got to, they were giving kudos, kudos out to us and the team, everyone else. They were really excited about uh, what we were able to accomplish for not only uh, upstate New York, but the uh, you know the city, of New York City as well. They're really proud of us. Does it help with LinkedIn at all for you? Uh, I'm still working. I lost my voice, and I, I still got to make up time on uh, on Miami. So I'm just kind of going through the motions. The team is. I had an opportunity to spoke, speak with the team yesterday, and uh, went very well. And I'm looking forward to getting back on the field with them on Tuesday. Uh, fantastic win. You know, I mean, something that they'll be able to share with their granddaughters and their grandkids and their sons and their daughters. It's, it's a big moment. There's no doubt about it. And they need to enjoy it because when I see them on Tuesday, we need to get back to work. Nico? This is kind of on the same thing last year. Um, yeah, how do you as a coach, you know, make sure they enjoy it and realize what they're about? Obviously, get back to work quickly. Folks have a really good Miami team. How do you balance that as a head coach? You know, you're playing another undefeated team in the top 10. Another storied program. Uh, they have more athletes than we have. We're trying to get athletes like they have, and we're playing them at their place. So it's going to be a difficult, difficult game, and we're going to be playing it on the road and the weather and everything else. So uh, we've got a lot of work to get to. to, get to. Thank you for giving me the receiver yeah, part because I'm sick. <laughs> I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a guy to take the position, just to flat take the position. We never question whether Ish is going out there first, whether Herb's going out there first, whether Slayton's going out there first. And until someone locks a position down, like locks a position down, you need to be fair, give people opportunities if you can. And you wouldn't say that position's a locked down one? Nope, I think, I think they're doing it. Both of them are battling for a position. Well, I don't want to go too public with it. Obviously, you're talking about a guy that's leading the country. He's, he's getting the number one DB on every team following him around. And uh, there's a lot of grabbing that goes on in college football. And sometimes it gets called, sometimes it doesn't. And he, he can't let that stop him from getting open. He needs to do the things that he needs to get open. So I think it's a give and take type situation. And I'm not going to talk much about the officials and how they call it. He's clearly very fired up, but not even just in those plays. Like this year when I watch him, uh, after a good, a good play, after a bad play, like he's more visibly emotional. Do you, do you like that about him? And, and is that different than past Steve Schmell? All that stuff, Steve and I talk about that stuff all the time. He understands what I think, what he represents to us and how I want him to represent us. I think the kids' attitudes, I think the coaches going back and uh, getting tired of reading a lot of newspaper articles that were written last year about what MAC level or what level coaches they were compared to everybody else based off their resume, which has nothing to do with anything. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo came from an FCS program, and he's the number two quarterback in New England Patriots, and last time I checked, a lot of people want him, even though he didn't have play at the same level of football as everyone else. Football, there's only 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense. Anyone can master this game if they're willing to put enough time in. It doesn't matter where you started at or what your surname is or who your father was, whether it was passed down to you by genetics. So I think they're a little teed off about that. And I think the players were a little teed off about that. And I think they re-energized themselves to come out this, this year and prove to everyone else that not only they're good coaches, but there's good players on that side of the football as well. Your game day talking about Syracuse on Saturday morning, all the national stuff. Can you, can you compare how much this win could impact your program? 
The win is big. It's, it's a national win. It's really the timing. When you play on a Friday night, everyone sees you. I mean, if we were playing on Saturday, we'd have been sitting there Friday night watching that game with our team or watching the game in different individual rooms, getting ready for a meeting somewhere. Everyone sees you. So it's, it's a big moment, you know. As the millennials would say, if you, that's a trending moment. Everyone's watching. The social media is buzzing. Everybody knows what's going on. It's big. But it's not big if the season doesn't go what you want it to. This moment is big. It has nothing to do with the season. The moment is big. If you're just talking about the moment, it's big. It's happening to how people are playing us. They're doing more things to take away Ish and Irv, which gives other people opportunities to exploit other parts of the defense. It's just part of the chess game. Some of the challenges with Miami, I know you mentioned the just because of the recruiting trip, but it's a team in the ACC that you don't see every year because you're on the other side of it. Just uh, what you know about them and what some of the athletes and some of the specific challenges you might have. Like Coach Rick, a guy that's been around a very long time. You know, this is not one of those young coaches. He's been around a very long time. He's been a top coach. I want to say he was trained by Bobby Bowden. I might be wrong, but I want to say it was Bobby Bowden. And uh, his lineage, and you look at the things he's done, it's all solid. His foundation is extremely solid. The way he's changed that program very quickly. Go ahead. I think he was a first-year coach with me, and this is his second year. Uh, obviously, he's a graduate of Miami. I believe he played quarterback there. But he knows the area. He knows the recruits. And, uh, and he's got them going. For them to be undefeated at this stage of the game, and a big win over Georgia Tech. To beat Georgia Tech, that's big. And now he's got an opportunity to be top 10 this quickly in that program. Just goes to show you what type of athletes they have down there in Coral Gables. Nate? Uh, Slayton's not the most vocal guy, but what's giving you on a weekly basis down there in the trenches? I don't even call Slayton by his name anymore. Slayton is just, I just call him three technique. And that's the position he plays. And he plays the, possession, the position like a grown man, in a grown man's league. He is the key to what we do on defense. He is as highly, he will be as, I mean, he's, he's, he's going to be a professional football player. I mean, he's going to graduate with a Syracuse degree, and then he's going to be a professional football player. That's what Chris Slayton's going to be. I mean, he's outstanding. I didn't hear the first part. Say it again. Some of your players said after the game Friday that, that shows us what we can do when we play off four quarters. I'm assuming you agree with that. And, and you know, how, how do you build on that? Well, like I told him, I said, you guys messed up because you showed us how good you can play when you all play together. So now the bar is raised again and game on. So I'll see you on Tuesday and put your lips together and get ready to work. It, it, was, it was fabulous. And we were. We still had a lot of mistakes. You know, we, we talk about some of the mistakes on the other side. There was a lot of mistakes on our side, too. We had a lot of points pulled off the board that could have made the game different. But that's what happens when you have two very competitive teams competing. There's going to be mishaps, and there's going to be good and bad on both sides. I thought the way the momentum kept changing, how we'd go ahead and they'd come back. We'd go ahead, they'd come back. We'd go ahead, they'd come back. But the guys never put their head down. They never had any doubt. And once again, when everybody believes, and they don't care who gets the credit, there's an opportunity for great things to happen. And I'm, that's the part that I'm proud, of, proud most about it, is how they kept fighting back. Because that team's a champion, they're national champions. They're not going to give up. So now what are you going to do? They hit you, now what are you going to do? Are you going to hit them back? They did a great job, really proud of them. The highest evaluation I can give him is one of his most dangerous positions. I mean, he's, he's so good throwing on the run out of the pocket that you almost, from a defensive standpoint, you almost have to say, do we even want him to be able to do this? Do we tell our guys to do something to force him to throw from the pocket? Because he's that dynamic when he gets outside the pocket. And I wouldn't be surprised if some defense takes that philosophy down the road. It's a good question.
since we're about to play them, they're the best front seven I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys.